After a night of passion, Petra and James wake up together early in the morning. Petra rushes out to go to class, but James decides to stay in bed a little longer. This causes him to oversleep, and by the time he wakes up again, he's already late. He runs through the city as fast as he can until he makes it to his philosophy class, where the teacher Mr. Zimmet at first considers not letting him, but eventually he opens the door. Today is the last school day, and Mr. Zimmet wants the students to tell them about their favorite thought exercise they've gone through. Chips mentions the infinite monkey theorem, which says that if you give a monkey a typewriter and an infinite amount of time, it will eventually type out the entire hamlet. Jack mentions the trolley problem, which says you have a lever to choose if a train will kill one or four people. Just for fun, they change that riddle into the obese man problem, where you have to option to push a fat man on the tracks to stop the trolley. Georgina likes the ignorant bliss paradox, in this one, someone is hanging off the highest tower in the city on purpose to test if their friends will help them. However the friends are afraid if they try to pull them up, they might be yanked over themselves, so they step back. The person falls in lives, but now they wonder if it truly is better knowing that their friends wouldn't save them or if ignorance is bliss. Zimmet decides that they will do one last thought exercise to finish the school year, the class must assume there is an impending atomic apocalypse and imagine a bunker that will give them shelter for a year. Zimmet begins narrating the scene to make everyone use their imaginations, picturing an area surrounded by nuclear explosions. As Zimmet takes them through an imaginary tour of the bunker, he points out the problem, there are only supplies for 10 people. The class has 20 students in it, so they have to decide which of them to let in and who stays out, on top of that there isn't much time to decide before the atomic radiation reaches them. Georgina refuses to participate because she thinks it's just like discussing eugenics, but when Zimmet describes how gruesome and painful it is to die under radiation, she accepts to play. Petra also refuses to participate and even stands up to leave, knowing that she's always had perfect grades and Zimmet can't hurt her by lowering them a bit. However Zimmet threatens to lower James' grades instead, which would make him fail the class, and Petra has no choice but to stay. Next, Zimmet distributes cards containing the random profession each student will have in the exercise. He opens the box for James first and after he takes a card, Zimmet goes to the desk to cough before handing a card to Petra. Then he coughs against at the desk before giving cards to everyone else. Now the students can look at the professions they got, all these jobs vary in themes, from harpist and wine auctioneer to astronaut and chemist. Toby reveals he's a published poet, but he barely gets to finish talking before Zimmet shoots him, revealing he took the gun from the bunker. Zimmet explains that this is more humane than letting him die by radiation, since he wouldn't get into the bunker anyway because a poet isn't useful when humanity must be rebuilt. Zimmet also explains he's part of the exercise, but his profession is hidden so he should be seen as a wild card. Afterward each student defends their right to enter the bunker and they proceed to vote. The first nine choices are those who they consider useful for survival, Petra the structural engineer, James the farmer, Georgina the orthopedic surgeon, Chips the carpenter, Jack the chemist, Bonnie the soldier, Andy the electrician, Poppy the psychotherapist, and Omicide the senator. There are also nine that quickly get voted out for not being useful, Vivian the zoologist, Beatrice the fashion designer, Parker the gelato maker, Covey the real estate agent, Russell the harpist, Plum the hedge fund manager, Nelson the housekeeper, Mitzi the wine auctioneer, and Yoshiko the astronaut. The last place must be chosen between Zimmet and Yutami the opera singer. Petra thinks a wild card is a risk, but Jack points out that an opera singer is a luxury and he'd rather risk it with Zimmet, who may have a useful secret. Zimmet wins, and now that the groups are completed, they take five minutes to say goodbye, so they move the desks around to pretend they're having their final words. Suddenly they hear some gunshots and discover Zimmet has killed everyone who didn't get a spot, again saying it was the humane thing to do. The group is shocked, and Petra whispers to James that she doesn't want Zimmet in the bunker anymore. James makes a plan and asks everyone to gather some plants before going into the bunker, claiming they're keeping them for replanting when they come out. While everyone is separated to do the gathering, James goes to each of them in turn and tells them of his plan. When the time comes, the group enters the bunker and disables the external keypad before closing the door while Zimmet is left outside. Then they take a look at the different rooms, there's an artificial garden, a day bed, a gym, books, and other things to supposedly avoid depression. In the evening while everyone sleeps on the cots, James meets Petra on the big bed and tells her he can get through anything with her. Once James falls asleep, Petra goes to check on Zimmet and finds him slowly burning under the radiation. Suddenly Zimmet holds up a piece of paper that says only he has the exit code. Petra immediately calls the group and they begin arguing over what to do, unsure if believing Zimmet or not. In the end they decide to ignore him, and they begin to live through the year in the bunker. It's incredibly boring, and they barely can keep themselves busy with mundane tasks. Every day Petra checks on Zimmet's body, which is slowly rotting, and occasionally a dog comes to munch on it. Once the year passes, the group gets ready to come out, only to discover Zimmet had been right, the lock asks for an exit code. The students proceed to use different methods to try to break the door, to no avail. They try to survive a few more days with the few supplies they have left, but soon they run out, so they decide to end things for themselves for a more humane ending. 
In class, Zimit announces they failed the experiment and reveals his profession is a bunker builder, in fact he was the one that built that particular bunker and therefore the only one who has the code. The students want to try again, and this time, they imagine a new location, choosing Mont Bromo. Once again Zimit runs to grab a gun, which Petra notices. Then it's revealed that the cards hide a second characteristic that may influence the votes. James' characteristic is being gay, but he still gets accepted for his farming knowledge, although with fewer votes. Georgina the surgeon was exposed to the Ebola virus, so this time she's left out. Plum the hedge fund manager always travels with a bag of gold, so she is accepted. Chips the carpenter is infertile, but he's also accepted again because of his skills. Petra the structural engineer is also an electrical engineer, so she is saved. Andy the electrician reveals he has a very rare disease that may kill him at any second, so he's rejected. Poppy the psychotherapist can't have children, so she's left out. Vivian the zoologist reveals she supports PETA, so she is left out again. Jack the chemist won the genetic lottery, meaning he'll live long and healthy, so he's accepted again. Covey the real estate agent is also a midwife, and since they've lost Georgina as their doctor, he gets to stay this time. Parker the gelato maker has no extra characteristic, which means someone else has two, and he's left out. Yutami the opera singer has two, she can speak seven languages but she will develop a throat tumor in three years that won't let her talk anymore, so she's left out. Mitzi the wine auctioneer has an IQ of 200 yet she's left out again. Beatrice the fashion designer created a popular brand of women's clothing out of bamboo, but she's also left out again, and the same happens to Russell the harpist who is autistic. Omaseed the senator will be the first female chief justice of the Supreme Court, therefore she is saved again. Bonnie the soldier has eidetic memory and gets saved once more. Nelson the housekeeper is an exceptionally kind person which at first doesn't help him, but he ends up staying when Petra says that they need more boys and Omaseed argues that they need more hard and strong workers from the middle class. When Toby the poet is about to mention his characteristic, Zimit shoots him again, saying this spot is for him because the group still doesn't know the code. Then Zimit gives Georgina the keys to a truck, and the people that were left outside immediately try to run away to save themselves. Unfortunately, the vehicle is hit by the explosion. The chosen ones also begin running to reach the bunker just in time, and the boring everyday life begins once again. Later in the evening, Petra wakes up and sees James isn't on his bed, so she goes looking for him only to find him getting frisky with Jack, who turns out to be gay in real life. Petra is hurt and rushes out to tell the rest of the group what she saw, now they decide it's time to discuss how they will get together to procreate. Since Chips is infertile, he doesn't need to help, while Jack and James refuse to participate because they can't even fake it with a woman for the sake of babies. Bonnie and Covey are paired together and so are Omaseed and Nelson. As revenge for her boyfriend, Petra accepts to do it with Zimit, ignoring James when he says she still loves her. While the explosions outside ravage the planet the three couples get frisky at the same time. After 10 weeks of no pregnancies, Zimit points out that they must change couples, saying the girls should have multiple partners. Bonnie refuses, saying they are taking logic too far to solve things and that shouldn't override her consent. Zimit walks away only to return with a gun in hand, threatening everyone but Bonnie to leave the room. The group runs out but Jack manages to hide behind a corner and once Zimit is distracted, Jack tackles him and makes him drop the gun. Bonnie quickly picks it up and holds Zimit at gunpoint, but the guys continue to fight until Zimit overpowers Jack. However Jack retaliates by stabbing Zimit in the ear with a pen. Devastated, Zimit goes to the front door and puts in the code to open it, bringing everyone down with him. The class has failed the exercise again. James is more suspicious now and questions Zimit's motives for the exercise, mentioning the strange cough he had when he assigned him and Petra the roles and pointing out that Zimit has not coughed since. Suddenly James goes to the desk and grabs the box, running out of Zimit's reach to open it and discover the secret. It turns out that the box has hidden compartments and James and Petra's cards have been tampered with, meaning they would always get the same results, gay farmer and double engineer. James wants to know why Zimit hates him in particular, so Zimit brings up the allegory of Plato's cave. In this allegory, a man lives his whole life chained to a wall and only ever sees shadows and hears echoes, assuming that's how reality truly looks and sounds. One day the man is unchained and finds that the shadows are caused by bodies and the echoes are caused by voices, discovering that the whole idea of what was real was just an illusion. Zimit says that this allegory is something like James, claiming that the exercise is meant to confront James about how his privilege has ill-prepared him for the real world, but James doesn't believe him. Zimit could have made him something useless like a florist so he could be voted out since the beginning, but a gay farmer means Zimit wanted him to prolong his suffering on purpose. At that moment Petra interrupts the argument and insists that the exercise should be done a third time, this time with James as a florist. Now their imaginations take them to an island and the apocalypse hasn't happened yet. Zimit goes to the bunker to grab a weapon as usual, and he hears a noise but thinks nothing of it. When he goes back outside, Petra joins him and offers him a hug, saying that she knows it's been hard on him. Afterward, Petra asks everyone to trust her to choose who gets to enter the bunker because she has a plan. When everyone agrees, Petra makes her choices and explains her reasoning, 
Mitzi is saved because a genius wine auctioneer would be smart enough to bring both red and white wine on a trip, ensuring everyone has a good time. Beatrice is saved because dressing well boosts self-esteem which promotes productivity and could save civilization. Toby's second skill turns out to be champion poker player, so he's saved because he brought cards with him and he'll provide entertainment. Russell is also saved because many people consider autism a gift. Georgina was only exposed to Ebola but they don't have proof she has it, so Petra brings her in while promising to pray for her. Yutami the opera singer may be mute in three years, but now everyone could fall asleep to her singing so she also gets saved. Jack is taken in because of his perfect genes, but he is upset because he'll be without a partner because of his orientation. At that moment Parker comes out of the closet, so he's saved as well with only two spots left, Petra chooses James. As the chosen ones enter the bunker, in the classroom everyone sits together as a team. Zimit has been complaining all along and with each choice, he lowers Petra's grade to the point of failing, but seeing the useless people enter the bunker makes him lose it and he reaches for his gun. However he doesn't find it, it turns out Petra stole it when she hugged him earlier. She gives it back to him, only to reveal it's not loaded. Petra hands Zimit two bullets, saying she doesn't want him to suffer like last time, but at that moment James threatens Zimit with a rifle, it turns out he had been the noise in the bunker. Desperate to survive, Zimit says that nobody knows the exit code except him, but Bonnie used her perfect memory to memorize it during the last run. Feeling defeated, Zimit leaves. Next Petra wants to give the last slot to Bonnie, but since she refuses, Chips takes the spot. James is no longer gay in this itineration of the exercise and begs Petra to come with them, but she refuses, saying she'll take the boat and try to get out of the radiation zone, only for Chips to reveal he has the boat keys. Acting fast, Chips pushes Petra inside, switching places with her before the door closes. While the rest of the group rushes to the boat to get off the island, Petra continues to narrate the thought exercise, explaining that despite horrific circumstances, somehow they had fun during the year in the bunker because they had cards, wine, Shakespeare performances, and original poems. James tells Petra how much he loves her, but she hesitates to respond with the same phrase. When machines break in the bunker, they use the pieces to make a harp, and Russell plays it while Yutami sings to make their evenings magical. Once the year passes, the group leaves the bunker only to discover that the bombs never fell. Zimit narrates that they will die, as none of them have the technical skills to survive on an island, but Petra responds that their lives will be short, but at least they'll be well and happy, they'll also be ready to welcome death when it arrives. Suddenly a rocket falls on the beach and James gets ready to detonate it, but at that moment Zimit shows up and shoots to stop him. It turns out he had found a cave and went deep enough to avoid the radiation, for the past year he has been surviving with what he could find there. Zimit can't let them commit an act as unreasonable as ending the human race and threatens to shoot James with his last bullet, but the rest of the survivors move one by one to stand in front of him as a shield. They use the chance to press the detonation button, and the bomb blows up the entire island. Back in class, Zimit is ashamed of the latest exercise, but Chips quickly cuts in to offer his own version as well. He says that the boat managed to go far enough to avoid the explosion, and he became the only guy with six women all to himself. The group wonders what happened to the three other males, and Chip says Covey drowned, Nelson had a barracuda attack, and Andy had a run-in with the palm tree. Being infertile doesn't mean the chance of procreation is zero, so in this ending, Chips taps a different girl each day. Zimit finally finishes the class, and all the students leave except Petra, who accuses Zimit of trying to use the exercise to punish James. It turns out Zimit has been having an affair with Petra, and he believes James is beneath her. Petra explains that intelligence isn't all that matters and that she loves James, so he shouldn't be punished for something he doesn't know about anyway. Petra gives Zimit a last kiss and leaves. Afterward Zimit is alone in the school and begins running through many variations of what happens if he goes to his office. Sometimes he simply eats, but other times he finds his gun and a shot can be heard in the building. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. So feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next one, bye.